So our <coughs> purpose today is to provide the background on the regulatory measures on management of cysticercosis to safeguard food of animal of origin by administering the following act, which is Animal Disease Act. We've got Meat Safety Act at the slaughter level, Agricultural Product Standard Act, and then Animal Identification Act. Okay, I would like just to give an overview of what is the situation. Uh, we've realized that access to veterinary services is considered to be one of the key challenges facing the communities of the developing world. Zoonotics form a sizable pro proportion of the new emerging and re-emerging diseases. Infection with tinea is considered to be a significant problem and poses a serious public health risk, especially in the developing countries like our country in South Africa. Tinea cysticercosis is associated with poor sanitation, poor animal husbandry, lack of proper meat inspection, and general lack of disease control measures in certain areas. Strong policies that integrate livestock disease control offer an opportunity for bettering the health of humans through better and safe livestock production. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, in as far as our Meat Safety Act is concerned, we all know that it says no, nobody is allowed or no person is allowed to slaughter any animal at any place other than an abattoir. But, however, you can slaughter for ritual purposes. And then provided that the following requirements are met, of which one of those followings uh, will be make sure that you slaughter a healthy animal. So the question will be, how do you make sure that you slaughter a healthy animal? Okay, we do that by the following. I heard that we've been discussing about um, the control measures, but where we find that at the communal, it is very difficult. Yes, I agree with that one, because at the communal, there's no meat inspection. So we, as Department of Agriculture, Forest and Fisheries, we enforce at the farm level, on farm level or at the slaughter level. Veterinary policies focus on the implementation of appropriate measures on farm and at the abattoirs. These are considered to be key elements in ensuring safe food of animal of origin. Primary production should be managed in a way that enhances the safe and sound meat for human consumption. Systems should be in place in order to detect hazard pre present in an animal population which may affect safety and suitability of meat. If we talk about the, the, the system that should be in place, like for instance, on farm, um, the farmers are responsible to make sure that they deworm their people. If you look at cysticercosis, uh, it is more of the public health. Uh, in other words, if people were not infected of tapeworms, so animals were not going to be infected. So the Department of Health as well is supposed to play a role because that is where it starts. It starts with a human being, then an animal. So that is why it's even be, uh, uh, very difficult for animal health guys to control or to put it under controlled diseases or notifiable diseases. Sister Circle does not form part of those. It doesn't form part of those. Yes, it is a zoonotic, but it doesn't form part of the controlled diseases or notifiable diseases. Primary production should include officially recognized programs for control and monitoring of zoonotic diseases, such as uh, the sanitation programs, you know, on, on, on farms. Notifiable zoonotic diseases should be reported as required in order to prevent outbreaks from taking place. Good hygiene practice should involve, I mean, should involve health and hygiene of animals, records of treatment, feeding staffs, and relevant environmental factors. Uh, where uh, uh, HACCP is implemented, 
has the principles must be considered as well. Animal identification practices with full traceability systems. Animals should not be fed with feeding staff that are likely to introduce zoonotic agents, e.g. TB brucellosis, cysticercosis agents, etc., to the slaughter population. Animals should not be fed with feeding staff that contain chemical substance, e.g. veterinary drugs, pesticides, or contaminants that could result in residues in meat at level that make the product unsafe for human consumption. If we look at this, uh, ladies and gentlemen, in fact, if at the production level, everything was according to how it's supposed to be, we, there was no need for us to have an abattoir where we'll be able to control or to verify, because abattoir is all about verifying that those animals are, are safe or are free from any diseases. Otherwise, production level is supposed to be the right place to control these diseases. But because we knew that there are diseases that you can, you can be able to identify when an animal is still alive, and there are diseases that you cannot. So that is why abattoir came into play, to make sure, to just to verify, before people take, can consume that product. We look at the slaughterhouse now. At the slaughterhouse, that's why we said we've got meat inspection. Meat inspection, must make sure that these following are implemented. Risk management, identification of hazard. We must be able to identify the hazard, whether biological, chemical, or physical. Qual qual qualitative, quantitative of the adverse effect. Qual qualitative, quantitative degree of consumption. Risk management, weighing policy alternative. Should anything goes wrong, what else should we do? Selecting and implementation of appropriate control option, including regulatory measures. Establish the significant estimated risk. Compare the cost of reducing the risk with the benefit gain. You know, we cannot spend more and gain little. Compare the political institutional process of reducing the risk. Develop standards, guidelines, and other recommendations of food safety. Risk communication, exchange information and opinion among risk assessors, risk managers, and other interested parties. That is why we are here today. Risk communication provides the private and public sector with the information necessary for preventing, reducing, or minimizing food risk to acceptable level through systems of food quality and management by either mandatory or voluntary means. That's why we've been discussing and having some ideas as to how are we going to go about preventing this problem. The main legislation or legislations within the Department of Agriculture, like I've, I've shown you before, Animal Disease Act, which regulates on farm disease control and health of the animals, Meat Safety Act, which regulates the slaughter of animals at an abattoir, to ensure that only healthy animals are slaughtered and are handled in hygienic manner. Animal identification regulates the re registration of animal identification marks that will act as a first-line defense against stock theft, enhance identification of proper and support traceability. Agricultural Product Standard Act, which regulates marketing of certain agricultural product. So, in as far as our Meat Safety Act is concerned, at an abattoir level, we've got something called anti-mortem inspection, where we screen animals when they land into an abattoir. In fact, we do not, in an abattoir, we do not want animals that are infected. We want them healthy. But due to the fact, like I said, that there are diseases that we cannot be able to identify when an animal is still alive. So we do encounter those things. But this is what we normally do at, the, uh, uh, at an anti-mortem inspection. All animals presented for slaughter at the abattoir shall be inspected while alive to ensure that no un unhealthy animals are admitted into the food chain. Anti-mortem inspection includes evaluation of health declaration records, e.g. treatment used with royal times, like something uh, antibiotics, visual inspection of the animals in larages, 
okay, the decision, decisions that will be made during Antimon terms. Animals are approved for slaughter. We look at those animals that can be slaughtered first. If they are normal, healthy, then they need to be slaughtered first. But uh, there are cases where you find that there is an emergence. Imagine this slaughter, we're not talking about sick animal, we're talking about an animal that maybe has got a broken leg. So because we, we want to prevent that, that animal must not uh, suffer from pain, which will contribute negatively to the meat. So we put those ones at first, so vice versa now. We put them at first, and then we follow with the ones that we said we approve for slaughter if they are normal. Uh, animals approve delayed separate slaughter. If we, I mean, we find something wrong, those animals will be slaughtered, slaughtered at last. Because why? We don't want to contaminate the life. But there are other diseases like foot and mouth, TB, brucellosis. You'll find that animals will be brought into an abattoir with certificate indicating that those animals are, are sick so that we can, we can take some measures. And then animals are condemned or post-mortem is conducted. Sometimes we find animals that will die during the transportation or we find them dead on, on pens. So those animals will be, will be condemned. But uh, the most important thing, post-mortem should be conducted. Um, each carcass, that is primary meat inspection now, each carcass part, uh, a, a carcass part thereof shall be examined by a registered meat inspector who shall be present at an abattoir. In other words, in an abattoir, we, we, we must have a, a registered meat inspector who will be there full time to make sure that when they bring the animals, he will do an inspect. When they slaughter, he's there for inspection. Each carcass, shall, each carcass has, that has been examined and approved by the registered meat inspector is marked with an approval stamp each stamp is unique for that abattoir and has the abattoir registration number. So they're using the unique numbers. For poultry, the marks must be printed on the wrapping and packing or on labels of each individual carcass or cut portions. If the inspector is not satisfied about the carcass, such carcass is detained for secondary meat inspection. Secondary meat inspection, it is only performed by the veterinarian. For all detained carcass to make or confirm the diagnosis, the decision made at an end of meat inspection include approved carcass or conditionally approved carcass, total condemnation or partially condemnation, because it depends. There are diseases where you find that you need only to condemn the organs. And there are diseases that you need to only cut that only affected part. All meat living abattoirs have stems of approval saying meat is safe. Once the meat leaves in the abattoirs, it enters the custody of the other statute, which is Department of Health. That is why nowadays, or recently you heard when we had a problem of this uh, meat scandal, just because people do not understand the role that is played by the Department of Agriculture and the role that is played by the Department of Health. So when everything goes out of control, yes, Department of Agriculture. So without really knowing who's doing what. So Department of Health is taking everything immediately when the meat leaves an abattoir. It's out of our control. We can't do anything anymore. It's supposed to be Department of Health. But within an abattoir, then it's Department of Agriculture. So if we can separate the two, then it will be easier. Um, butcheries, meat processing plants, retailers are not regulated by the Meat Safety Act. That's what, that's what they say. This is what we're talking about. When we're talking about the approval stamp, we all know how it looks like. Okay, now we are getting to the fundamental part of what we're talking about in as far as sister circles is concerned. We're handling the thing, should it, should it be found in an abattoir? A carcass had a red offal found to be infested with one or more parasit parasitic intermediate stages, which may be alive or calcified, must be detained, whether it is alive or not, but it must be detained. 
when one or more parasitic uh, intermediate stages are found on the majority of the incision surfaces, the carcass must be condemned. Because somehow, somehow, somehow that is where we lose the track. You'll find that people could not or cannot, be, could, cannot calculate them properly, they think it must be passed, it must be condemned at that level. Where the infestation is not excessive, the carcass and organ may be passed on condition that it undergoes treatment. We do not just let anything. Um, a conditionally passed carcass must be identified by a roller marking in red ink along its entire side with the letter M, being a minimum of two centimeters in height. All parts belonging to the carcass be treated must be identified by M tags. It happened in abattoirs, in many abattoirs. I used to work in an abattoir. In a, by experience, it happened that you'll find that if there is no proper correlation of, between the carcasses and the organ, you'll find that the, the organs already are taken away. They are sold. That is the loophole. Sometimes it's not that the meat inspector wants to see that happening. It will be because of the owner of an abattoir. So that is why meat inspection must be independent. Okay, carcasses and organ must be treated by freezing a, a site in a freezer with a temperature of minimum 18 degrees Celsius for 72 hours or which is 10 degrees for 10 days. And it must be under control of the meat inspector. He's the one who's supposed to make sure that the, the, the freezer is locked up to that date. Carcasses and organs must reach a deep bone or core temperature of less than minus 6 degrees, confirmed by the registered meat inspector and in accordance with the protocol approved for the specific abattoir by the provincial executive officer. If the meat deep bone, the container or cartoon must be marked with letter M and the date of introduction into the freezer must be indicated. I still remember in one of these abattoirs where I used to work, you'll find that if you don't keep the keys, sometimes they refuse you to keep the keys. When you come the following day, the meat is already taken out. What can you do? You report. The core temperature of the meat inside the container or carton must be below minus six degrees Celsius before it can be released by the registered meat inspector. You see, every time meat inspector must play a role. But sometimes there are instances where you find that the, the abattoir <coughs> owner interfere. When using chest type freezer, which is allowed, carcasses must be portioned according to protocol approved by the provincial executive officer, especially for those rural abattoirs, because they are too small. They can't have the facility within. So they will need to take the meat somewhere else. But protocol, must be followed. Visible parasitic intermediate stages must be removed from the meat of a carcass that is conditionally passed and treated. Guys, it must be removed after an approval that this meat can be, can be eaten or can be consumed. Not that you remove it before. It must be removed after. Records of core and freezer temperatures, batches of containers, carcasses and organs must be kept for at least six months for traceability. Okay, challenges regarding meat inspection in South Africa. This is, what is, this is the situ current situation right now. While control measures are focused at the abattoir level and action by meat inspectors, coordination and communication is generally poor. We agree with that. Meat inspection is conducted by a private sector service provider. That is why we're still busy with the independent meat inspection. You'll forgive us for that, but it is in a pipeline. Although passive surveillance at abattoirs is considered to be an important element in disease control, communication about daily finding by meat inspectors is not often centralized. Such information is only available at the abattoir level. There is a need to provide capacity for coordination and consolidation of monthly disease report and data on condemnation, both at central and provincial level, which is a bit poor. 
In conclusion, um, there is a study that was done in Eastern Cape. According to that study, 28 to 50 percent of African children with epilepsy were positive of cysticercosis. What does that tell you now? We've been talking about this 10K. 28 to 50 percent epilepsy found with cysticercosis. So, neurocysticercosis. So, the Department of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries under the Directorate of Veterinary Public Health is busy preparing a project that will establish the current situation between pig husband practices and slaughter processes at the abattoir. I agree, yes. Animal health technicians are there under the mandate of animal health to make sure that they assist us uh, 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 with these things at an abattoir level. But we must also re realize or remember that, like I said, Sisti Circuses is more of public health. It's supposed to be Department of Health that plays a crucial role because we must co correct at the source. If you correct at the source, that's why they say prevention is better than, co uh, than, than cure. We, we correct at the source, not when everything already is wrong. Then I thank you.